Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am only, okay wait, it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, four days pre-op. I'm really excited to do another check-in with you. Um, I've been a little MIA this week only because I've been busy homeschooling kids and getting ready for surgery on Thursday, which I'm really excited about. Um, I wanted to do a quick check-in with you, A, on some uh, more things that I got all off of Amazon. Um, in preparation for my surgery as well as B, I wanted to give you a little sneak peek at what's going in my hospital bag. Um, we're down to the finish line now guys so anyhow let me get started. Um, I heard that after the anesthesia and even like after surgery you can be very very nauseous so I picked up gravel. A, it'll help me sleep. B, it'll help with any nausea that I might have. Uh, from having my kids and being under um, even just like epidural in the past, I definitely am a vomiter. So I have a feeling that this is a really good idea. And uh, a friend of mine told me that if this isn't good enough, I can actually get a prescription from my doctor for something stronger than gravel. So anyhow, some type of anti nauseum I'm also going to be putting in my vehicle um, on my way home because as I mentioned, I have like a one hour drive home after surgery. I'm actually going to put a barf bag or something I can puke in because knowing me, I'm going to puke. So anyhow, gravel plus barf bag. Um, this I'm not going to put it in my hospital bag because I don't think I'll need it right out of the hospital. They'll probably give me something if anything, but this is going to be at home. Um, two more products, um, which you've probably heard a lot about, Arnica Gel as well as Arnica Tabs. Now, my research has told me and my doctor said it's fine that I can actually start taking the Arnica tablets a few days before surgery to help with bruising. Um, so I'm actually, I'm not going to start this today, but I'll probably start it tomorrow, Monday. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm going to take Arnica tablets. Hopefully it'll help with the bruising associated, especially with the liposuction. Um, and then the Arnica gel is supposed to help with just general body pain, back pain, um, through the recovery process. Because as we all know, um, your back takes a toll being hunched over like this for you know several weeks so arnica gel arnica tabs uh, once again these are not going in my hospital bag because i don't think i'll need them right from the hospital um, but they are going to stay at home for me um the other thing i picked up off of amazon and i mean if you're getting home care then you may not need to get stuff like this i know my doctor is not going to get me home care unless i absolutely need it so anyhow for 20 bucks i picked up um, a hundred pack of four by four medical grade gauze. Um, it's really important that you get the cotton type, not the fishnet type, because obviously if you've ever used the fishnetty type and you put that over a wound, your scab heals over that and then it's horrible to have to rip that off. So you wanna make sure that it's the cotton one, that it's solid. Um, and I heard that four by four was the best size to get because it works really well like over the nips or like over the belly button or you can spread a few out if you need over the incision. Um, so once again, like I'm going to leave the hospital with gauze and with all of that that they provide, but in time, I'm going to be responsible for my own dressing changes. So it's really important that you have um, gauze at home that you can do your own dressing changes with and make sure it's clean and sterile. So um, right now it's in this cello pack. I haven't even opened it. After I open it, I'm going to keep it in some type of Ziploc so it's super, super clean. So gauze. Um, the other thing I got, um, if they had Benadryl, I would have gotten Benadryl, but I couldn't get Benadryl. Um, so I ordered Claritin um, and it helps with itchiness um, and just like hives and like skin itchiness. So I heard that um, especially after a few days of healing, sometimes even after a week of healing, your incisions can feel uber, uber itchy. Um, my breasts, my stomach, and you definitely don't want to be scratching that. Um, so my plan is to take this, if I'm starting to feel itchy, wear like a long fitted tank top, something like this underneath my binder. Um, and to just sort of keep things compressed and not be able to itch it because that would be horrible for scar healing. So some type of allergy pill, Benadryl, um, Claritin does the same thing uh, that will help you with any itchiness that you might experience. Um, this is kind of special for me because I figure after surgery they're going to probably offer me like ginger ale or they're probably going to offer me juice or something like that and I practice keto diet so I don't drink juice and pop 
Um, so I wanted to find a keto friendly alternative for me for hydration, but that's also going to be settling to the stomach because I do understand that immediately after surgery, um, you're not necessarily hungry, even though you haven't eaten since, you know, the day before at midnight is when you have to cut off all food and all liquids. So you would think you would come out of surgery starving, but um, I hear the opposite that you're very vomity and you just want things to settle your stomach. So for me, instead of taking sugar, um, I purchased a Vega Sport Hydrator. So these are essentially electrolytes and they are sugar-free. They have got no carbs. They're a source of vitamin C. It is a berry flavor, so that'll hopefully be very... Um, you know, refreshing. So I'm going to give this to the nurse when I check in and I'm going to tell her to offer me this instead of any other beverage that they have because I want to maintain my keto diet um, through my recovery if possible. Um, and I know for me that really helps me with my swelling and my water retention on a day-to-day -day basis, even in my everyday diet. So it's something that I've decided I want to continue. So anyhow, pack yourself um, any snacks or drinks that are special to you if you don't want to just take whatever the hospital offers you. Um, so I'm going to bring this and I'm going to pack like a keto bar um, if I'm really that hungry, but I highly doubt I'm going to be hungry for anything. So this and a keto bar is actually going to go in my hospital bag. So I'll bring that over to the hospital bag side. Um, and this is another thing I got off of Amazon. It was one of the top rated ones. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to use these right away, but these are those silicone um, scar um, strips that they really recommend afterwards that you put on your incisions to help with healing. So once again, I won't be able to start using this until after the doctor says it's okay. I think it's at least three weeks generally before you start any type of scar therapy. I did also get the scar gel that the doctor recommended. I did also get bio oil, which I showed in a previous video, but I've also now picked these up because I heard that they're super easy because they just stay on all the time. Um, and they have fantastic ratings. And I believe this was like 20 or $30 on Amazon. And it's supposed to be like a two month supply because you can reuse them. So I'll let you know how I like these, um, but uh, we'll see how that goes. So that's everything um, new that I got since my previous videos that I've shown you. Um, now I wanna give you a sneak peek at what's in my hospital bag. Okay guys, so excuse my messy bed here. Um, I haven't made it yet, but anyhow, I initially started with a small bag, but I quickly realized that I actually need way more space. So I got a duffel bag, um, and this is going to be all the stuff that goes in my hospital bag. So let me start with my um, leaving the hospital outfit. So um, as I showed in a previous video, my husband got me this really nice Denver Haze um, drawstring pant as well as button front um, shirt and it's like super minky soft and I love that it's a dark dark color. Um, so this is going to be the pajama I come home from the hospital in. I also packed and I'm not sure if they're going to put it on me or not but I packed uh, similar to what I was wearing just like a long um, not tight by any means, but just like a long tank top that I could wear underneath the binder if needed. Um, I don't know if they'll put it on me or not, but I've packed it. I packed a hairband only because um, I always wear these these days. My hair is always back with a hairband and I want to sort of keep it that way, especially because I'm not going to be able to shower for a bit. Um, so hairband went in. I packed my SheFit bra that the doctor recommended. That's the $120 one that I mentioned in a previous video. But just in case, I also packed my $30 Amazon bra, which the doctor did not necessarily recommend. Um, he did not not recommend it, but anyhow, I have two basically post-surgical bras. This is the one my doctor recommended. I'm going to pack an extra one just in case. Now, because I'm also having a lift, uh, I have to wear an underwire bra as well as the sports bra at the same time. So my underwire bra is actually in the wash right now because I want it clean. Um, and it's the one that I've been wearing this whole time, like prior to surgery. So I'm going to be bringing my black underwire bra that the doctor approved as well as those post-surgical bras. Um, also along that note, I have my binder, my compression garment, which I spoke about in a previous video. It's not in the package right now because once again, I'm washing that. It's really, really important that you wash everything that you are planning to wear at a hospital. I don't recommend you know, taking it out of the package and wearing it because sometimes these manufacturing plants, like they're dirty, they're dusty. You don't know how long it's been there. So I'm washing my compression garment. I'm, I washed those bras. My other bra is being washed um, and I want to make sure whatever's being put on me is totally clean. 
Um, I packed chapstick because I heard that your mouth can be really dry and your lips post-surgery because of the breathing tube. So I have a chapstick and I also mentioned in a previous video that I got the um, throat lozenges. So I'm packing that as well. I mentioned in a previous video my big um, binder of information all about my surgery. So I am going to bring that with me. Um, all my information pre and post-op documents in case there's any questions about anything that I have it with me. Um, I'm also packing my soft robe. I might be freezing, I might not be, but I figure in addition to my pajamas, if I'm cold, instead of putting on a jacket or something, I'm gonna bring my robe or let's say like the pajamas aren't working for whatever reason, I can literally just throw a robe on. Um, so I am packing a robe. Uh, really important, all my surgery medications. I went in a previous video where I talked about all my medications. Um, you will see that since then I have organized all my medications into further Ziploc bags so I know sort of what's pre-op, post-op, and like what are the daily things I take afterwards. So all of this is going to come to the hospital with me ready to go. My doctor asked me to pack some sanitary pads. Um, I think this is just for like over the liposuction areas especially. So I'm packing a bunch of these. Um, in case I'm really leaky, as well as I mentioned in a previous video that I got on Amazon, these um, abdom abdominal pads that are extra absorbent and they are all individually sanitary packaged. Um, to me, the idea of using these on my incisions is kind of weird. So I actually preferred to purchase these, but I'm gonna bring both of them anyhow. I have a whole box full of these, but I'm just gonna bring a few. Once again, I think my, I'm going to leave my surgery with what my surgeon puts on me, but I think they just want you to have extra just in case. Um, oh, going back to clothing, I am going to pack a pair of those high-waisted underwear that I've talked about in several videos. I'm pretty positive they're not going to put them on me because I don't think you wear underwear right after surgery, but just in case, I'm going to pack those. And very, very important, don't forget your compression socks. So um, talked about these on a previous video. I got like four pairs for like 20 bucks on Amazon. I made my husband pick out which design and he picked out the hearts. He's so cute. So that is that. So guys, this is pretty well everything I have going on in my hospital bag. I will add, um, those electrolytes and, uh, a keto bar to the mix. But other than that, I'm pretty sure this is everything I need to take to the hospital. I'll let you know if anything changes. Um, so that is everything in my hospital bag. Now I also have another pile going on here and this is everything that's going to go in my vehicle. Um, so I got a bunch of these like hospital, like mattress protectors, like pee pad basically. So this is what I'm going to put on my seat in the vehicle on the way home in case I'm leaky. And I'll also use these. I've got tons of these around the house cause I've got four kids. So we've always had these. Um, but I'm going to use these like anywhere where I'm going to be sitting in bed, on my hospital bed, on the recliner, I'll have these available. So I'm going to take a few of them in the car. And I also packed kind of two thin pillows because I'm not sure if I'm going to want something to create a barrier while I'm in the car, like between the seatbelt and myself or even just something to lay my arms on. So I have two with a dark pillowcase in case once again, blood or anything like that, two thinner type pillows. And um, in case I need it, which I hear most people use, I got a neck pillow. So this is sort of my in the car pile ready to go. My hospital stuff is all going to go in my um, day bag and then I have all the things that I purchased on Amazon. So that's it guys, four days pre-op. I'm really, really excited. Um, as you guys have been following along, my journey has been like this in terms of emotions. I've had moments of being super excited, moments of being terrified. Right now I'm feeling really awesome about it. I'm sure leading up to the day that lorazepam is gonna come <laughs> um, in handy. So I'll continue to give you guys some check-ins um, as time goes. Uh, another update is um, I've been back on track since after New Year's with my diet. And I've been trying to be more mindful with exercise too and just getting like my minimum 10,000 steps a day. And some days are really great, some days not so great, um, especially because we're in lockdown here with a stay at home order. Uh, but I am seven pounds down since um, New Year. So I'm really happy about that. I feel way less bloated everywhere. I don't think I've shown you guys my stomach in a while. I feel like I was way more bloated before, but I mean, it's not perfect by any means and I can't wait for my tuck. 
but um, I feel like going into surgery, I feel healthy. I've been taking my vitamins um, and I've been doing everything I can to sort of be in my best possible shape. One thing I am experiencing right now is constipation. I know maybe a bit TMI, but I know that pooping post-surgery is like the worst possible feeling ever. So I've been really um, trying to keep up on the stool softeners. I have a feeling it has something to do with me getting back on track with keto diet. So I need you to do a better job of getting um, fiber in my diet that is also keto friendly. And I have a feeling also it's all the vitamins I'm taking. Uh, namely the vitamin D can be constipating. So I'm thinking that I'm going to continue taking my vitamins, but I might drop the vitamin D for the next few days only because I have a feeling that might be the culprit. Um, cause the last thing I want to do is to go into surgery constipated. Um, so I'm going to try to get a hang on that. Um, so if you are taking vitamins pre-surgery or if you are on any kind of special diet, make sure that you're regular before going into surgery. Otherwise, apparently we're going to deal with some really bad pain afterwards. So doing my best. I'm taking the stool softeners in the morning and at night right now. I'm going to adjust my vitamins and I'm going to add more fiber that is keto friendly to my diet to hopefully, um, clear myself up as best as possible going into surgery. Four days pre-op. Thanks for watching this check-in video.